there are a good few macroeconomic features worthy of note in the coming week. Japan's Tankan Business Sentiment Survey on Monday the 3rd of July, an interest rate decision in Australia on the 4th and an OPEC meeting on the 5th. But the headlines are all likely to go to the American jobs market. Independence Day may be Tuesday the 4th of July, but if there are any to be any fireworks in the markets, then the figures due on Thursday the 6th and Friday the 7th are likely to provide them. Thursday the 6th, we'll see the release of the ADP payrolls number, the Challenger Gray and Christmas Job Cuts report, and the Job Openings and Labour Turnover Survey, or JOLTS. All of those data sets are monthly, and the JOLTS may be the most intriguing one right now. In April, the survey surprised with a slight increase in the number of vacancies to 10.1 million. Those who fear an imminent recession in America will point out to how that figure is way down from the March 2022 peak of 12 million. Those who think the US economy is just going to keep on trucking will note how the April number still exceeds the pre-pandemic peak of 7.6 million. Thursday the 6th will also see the release of the US Bureau for Labor Statistics' weekly initial unemployment claims number. Last time around, this came in at 264,000, the highest figure in a year, to perhaps tally with the falling job vacancies and suggest the American economy may indeed be slowing. Then on Friday the 7th of July, economists, policymakers and investors will get to pore over the latest non-farm payrolls data from government sources, the US Bureau for Labor Statistics. The headlines last time were 339,000 jobs added, much stronger than expected and accompanied by an upward revision for the initial estimate for April, wage growth of 4.3% year on year and an an unemployment rate of just 3.7%. All of those play to the narrative of American economic strength. But they are backward looking, and by declaring itself data dependent, there is the slight danger that the American Federal Reserve is driving the car while looking in the rear view mirror, with the result that an accident or policy error could be on the way. We'll see. On the company front, a quartet of FTSE 100 firms is due to release a trading update or host an annual shareholders meeting, and there's a decent slate of mid and small cap firms ready to report as well. Names which may be worthy of further research include the following although some of these dates could still be subject to change. Porvair on Monday the 3rd of July, Sainsbury and Kitwave on the 4th, AO World, Tops Tiles and Red Northgate on the 5th, Seven Trent, Land Securities, Curry's, Jet2, Robert Walters, Victrex and Hunting on the 6th, and MJ Gleason on the 7th. But the company which could just cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is Persimmon, the York headquartered house builder, is due to release the first half trading update on Thursday the 6th of July, and that's ahead of the release of the actual interim numbers on the 10th of August. Now, the shares have almost halved over the past year, and followed by two-thirds from their 2021 all-time high, thanks to worries over higher interest rates, mortgage availability, housing affordability, input cost pressures, and an end to government support schemes, such as the stamp duty tax break and help to buy. The dividend has already been cut, and analysts have penciled in the second straight drop in profits in, in 2023. April's first quarter update, however, contained no additional nasty surprises, and Persimmon even suggested that completions this year could match the top end of the eight to 9,000 guided range. If the York firm does manage to complete 9,000 dwellings, that would still mean a 40% drop from last year's total of 14,868, and completions may well be the first number that analysts check. The second is selling prices, which came in at just under £250,000 on average last year. And the third is net private sales per outlet. This collapsed to 0.3 in the fourth quarter of 2022 amid chaos in the pension, government guilt and mortgage markets uh, and recovered into 0.62 in the first quarter of this year, although that was still a long way down from 0.98 in the equivalent three-month period in 2022. After that, analysts will look to any discussion of input costs and margins. The company has, so far, stated that flat prices in 2023 would knock 5 percentage points off operating margins owing to input cost inflation, while the anticipated drop in volumes could slash the return on sales by another 8 percentage points. These comments inform analysts' expectations of a near halving in pre-tax profit this year to £368 million, and that's against a base that was depressed by 2022's £275 million in additional provisions for cladding compensation and remediation costs. Attention will then switch to forward sales, £1.7 billion at the end of the first quarter, and any changes in the land bank. Persimmon spent just £173 million on land in the first three months of the year, but its, and its land bank shrank by 6% to around 86,000 plots as a result. 
Aggressive land buying would speak of confidence in near-term trading, but the opposite could also hold true, and Persimmon may well choose to sit on its cash. The company ended the first quarter with £363 million in net cash on its balance sheet, so it's well prepared for any potential downturn in business, especially as it went into the great financial crisis in 2007 with a big net debt pile. There's unlikely to be any talk of dividends at this stage, that would be more normal alongside the August interims, but analysts are currently looking for an unchanged full year payment of 60 pence a share. I hope that you and your families are all in good spirits and keeping well. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.